Good morning and welcome to Art From Home with the Westmont Ridley Tree Museum of Art. I'm Kerry Smith and this is my studio and today I'd like to share with you the journey of taking a line for a walk. So what does that mean, taking a line for a walk? Well, it's a wonderful way to express yourself. There are so many emotions that can be expressed through lots of different line making whether that's dots or dashes or a continuous line or a wavy line or a loopy line. There are endless possibilities and it's very, very fun. Take a line for a walk. As a line winds across a paper or canvas, this continuous band or mark can emit powerful emotions. The line is one of the most basic elements of visual art. You can use lines to create patterns and images. But to get the very best patterns, you need to practice and to see what patterns are all around you. Explore items both inside your home as well as outside in your environment. And while you're doing it, have fun. So when we look at line making, we have a great opportunity today because we can look at so many artists. A great example is the French artist Henri Matisse and he used a very quick expressionistic line. You can see how he created these bold, flat colors and striking outlines. American artist Jackson Pollock came up with a wonderful way to create with line. He dripped his liquid lines of paint, and you can see in this slide, there's great movement. British artist Bridget Riley was a pioneer in the 1960s of a movement in art called op art. She created hypnotic, optical illusions with her geometric forms. American artist Keith Haring's bold, thick, black outlines were often filled with bright, flat color, which made his work instantly recognizable. He was painting mostly in the 1980s, and he came from New York, and he would work in the undergrounds, the subways, and paint straight onto trains and on the sides of the tunnels. Spanish artist Joe Miro was a surrealist artist who paved the way for modern art with experimental shapes, lines, and objects. He and his work are great examples of taking a line for a walk. Take a look at his constellation series, where he draws within his paintings with many different lines and symbols. Let's look at all the different lines that you can make as an artist. You can create vertical lines, very simple. You can create swirly lines. Those are fun and you can fill them in with different colors and textures. Also dots are very easy to make and you can do those in lots of different colors. You can do a thick line. And you can do a thin line. You can do a wavy line. And you could do a loopy, wavy line. Ah, uh, there's diagonal lines. And there's cross-hatching lines where you go back over in the opposite direction. One of my other favorites is a loopy double loop, an up and down loop. What else can we create with lines? We can create zigzags. You can make them small and large. You can have organic lines that just travel and travel and travel. And that's just a few of the lines that we can make. And I bet you will find new ways to make lines yourself. So another lovely thing to do is when you take a line for a walk and you start painting, you may want to texture in some areas too. So I like to collect papers and keep them in little plastic food trays or whatever kind of tray you have that's handy. And you can start organizing all your materials. You can even use packaging, food packaging, and cut out and create pieces for something simple like a pizza box. And I also use these as storage envelopes. They're very useful. You can put all kinds of things in them. Another lovely thing to do 
is to take a hole punch. You can take a piece of paper, slide it in, press, and there's a wonderful texture piece for your art. So another thing you can do is buy a pair of scissors that has shapes in it, and then when you cut your paper, you can get a little shape like that. So it looks like a little wave almost. So there's lots of different things you can do, but get your collage materials ready and you can have a glue stick or you can take some Elmer's liquid glue and then you'll use this to attach it to your take a line for a walk. So another way you can make a palette is just take a plate and cover it with some foil. This is a great way you can set all your paints out. And if you want to use a sponge, you can actually take an old kitchen sponge and cut it up and you can dab that in the paint and use that on your paper. Um, a brush I really like is a fan brush. That's really fun for leaving trails and shapes that follow your lines. A simple jam jar for some water or any kind of jar you have is very useful. And then I like to mix paint, so I have these little containers and I can store my paints and make them just as I want them. Or you can have a paint palette. Here's one that I like to use. It's watercolors. Another thing I like to use are markers which are like brushes. And you can follow your lines, you can color within your lines, you could use gel pens, you could use crayons. I have an assortment of crayons too that I like to use. So there's lots of things you can use to texture your paper. You can use fingerprints, you can find pieces of magazines that you want to cut out and add. Okay, so let's get started with Take a Line for a Walk. The first thing you'll need is a sheet of paper, and if you don't have that, you could use a cardboard box, anything that you have in your home that you'd like to work on. I also like to take some tape and make some loops, and I like to secure my corners just so it doesn't move around. So I put a loop of tape like that. Now, if you're nervous about taking a line for a walk, you could begin with a pencil and then you can erase the lines after you go over them with a marker. But I think I'm just gonna go straight for it today and I have a black marker. You could use a black crayon, um, anything really that gives a bold, strong mark. And you're gonna start from the uh, top left corner and you're gonna have fun. And you're going to take that line for a wonderful walk. And you can go up and down and around and off the page take a line for a walk. So another thing you can do after you take the line for a walk, before you start putting your collage materials and drawing all your different shapes within these spaces, you can take your plate, you can put a little bit of paint on it, water it down, and use an old sponge, you can cut it any shape you want, and dab a little bit of paint, and you can just randomly go through and start putting some colors and don't worry about going outside of edges. You might want to go off the paper. But just have fun. You see, I'm just very loosely putting the paint on. Rubbing it in. It gets dry, you can just put a little bit more water. You can mix them. And just very quickly, you've put down 
some colour that you can work into. I like working with a sponge, it's very, very quick, and you can spread the paint out. Maybe we'll put a little bit more up here. And there we go. So, stage two. Take a line for a walk, and now you have some colour base. Okay, so you might want to have your glue stick ready. Keep that at the side. I have a lot of old paintings that I have already cut up and repurposed. That's a fun thing to do. So never throw away any of your art because you can always come along and cut it out or use a hole punch. But I start to place pieces that I have in fun ways. I like to use my circles. These are all old paintings of mine. And I start to put pieces down. Now I'm not going to glue anything initially. I'm just going to place them in areas that I think work. Now here's part of a pizza box. I'm going to put that there. And I'll take my small scissors. And there's some rather nice shapes in here. So I'm just going to go ahead. Maybe put a piece here. And I know that this is pretty much dry because I put it on so thinly, but Another nice thing to do, which Miro did, he had a lot of symbols and shapes that were very personal to him. So you could start to um, add some of your own shapes. It might be a line with a circle. You might decide you want to put zigzags in one area. You might want to put some crosses and then fill those in and make little triangles. Remember all those lines that we created? Well, here's your time to add all your lines. Some diagonal lines. You might want to cross hatch some of those lines. You might want to have some dots. So here's a scroll brush, which I like. And this way you can go right over the top. You can use your markers. You might want to color an area in in that lovely cerisi pink. You might want to glue this piece down because you might go, OK, that's where that's going to live. So you can go ahead and glue that down because you know it's going to stay there. And we could get another color. With some wavy lines. Remember, you can't go wrong with this because this is your work of art. And you keep going and going and building and building and you fill it with as much line and shape and color as you want. So we can see that I've been working on this one quite a bit and uh, you don't have to do it all in one day. You know, you can come back and revisit and add new pieces as you find other things that you might like to collage and put in. And I think this one's just about at the end. I'm just adding some swirls in here. But I think, maybe a dot. I think I like that. It's sometimes it's hard to stop because it's just so much fun to keep going and going. But the great thing is, once you have all your pens, your collage materials, you can make another one. Have fun and take your line for a walk. When you create your take a line for a walk, why don't you share it with us at Westmont? We'd love to see it. So thank you for joining me today at Kerry Smith Studio and do come again. I have lots of things to share.